I'm Dean Newland, and welcome to the Business of Intuition, where I coach, facilitate, train, and speak on the hard science and meaningful experience of intuitive leadership in business, so you can make better decisions, forge real connections, and creatively solve problems to amplify your impact and simplify your life. Welcome to the Business of Intuition. Today, we highlight some very important and timely ideas, specifically around AI and ChatGPT, such as the increasing use of these AI tools in marketing, and that we should caution that improper use can lead to a bot-like impersonal content and maintaining authenticity and human connection in AI-assisted marketing is not a replacement for human creativity and intuition. Great conversation. And I thought what I would do is use ChatGPT to create the introduction for my next guest. I've got this tool called Assembly AI, which will take a conversation over Zoom and transcribe the actual words that are spoken into text and then take it to the next step where it then creates a summary. I then took that information, threw it into ChatGPT, and asked it to create an introduction for this upcoming podcast. And this is what it came up with. It says, welcome back, listeners. Today, I'm excited to talk to a marketing expert who is learning and leaning into generative AI, specifically ChatGPT. She is a strong proponent of integrating human intuition, strategy, and technology advancements to maximizing marketing outcomes. The landscape of marketing is rapidly evolving, with coaches and businesses increasingly turning to AI-based tools like ChatGPT. However, improper usage of this technology can result in bot-like content lacking authenticity and human connection, two vital components in the realm of communication and marketing. Although powerful AI-only tools are indeed important, but human expertise and value laid on top of that is extremely important. My guest shares three pillars of AI-focused marketing strategy. Number one, the human touch. Number two, high-quality prompts. And number three, a proven strategy. By giving clear prompts and actively editing the output, ChatGPT can be effectively utilized while maintaining the unique human touch. So not a bad introduction. Uh, her point is this idea that 2060, 20, 20 represents the time it takes to be able to create the right prompts, which takes some time and practice. 60 is the output that ChatGPT creates for you. And then the other 20% is you going back and editing it and putting your own voice and expertise into the content that you're creating. My next guest, her name is Lindsay Anderson. And Lindsay really was just a dynamic person to talk to. She is a master business coach, 20 years of uh, digital marketing uh, experience. She's a best selling author and podcast host. She is the founder and CEO of the Build and Monetize Agency, the premier marketing agency for coaches. With her in depth knowledge of lead generation and uh, conversion, Lindsay excels in using cutting-edge technology such as ChatGPT to help coaches create high-converting enrollment systems for their coaching programs. Lindsay Anderson on the Business of Intuition. Lindsay, it's nice to have another Oregonian on the show. I don't normally get people from Portland who show up, but I'm sorry that you can't send us cooler weather, but thanks for the idea that probably more is coming, more hot weather. I wanted to start off our conversation about something that I think a lot of coaches out there are probably scratching their head about. A lot of them are, are probably smaller entrepreneurs who have to do everything. You know, they're, they're providing the service. They're probably, you know, scrubbing toilet. They're doing some marketing. They might even do a little bit of their own you know, finance, uh, bookkeeping, and so forth, kind of a jack of all trades. And then you've got people who have been around for a while, they can afford to start bringing other people on board to start supporting them like what you have. Nonetheless, coaching has been around for what, 30 years or so. Uh, marketing is a big part of that. 
And yet now we've got this thing called ChatGPT. We've got this thing called generative AI, which has sort of put a lot of companies into a tailspin around how the hell do we work with this? So I guess my question to start off with is give us some thoughts around how you know, small businesses or, or coaches themselves can leverage this new technology. Any tips, tools, do's and don'ts would be, I think, really helpful. Great. Well, Dean, it's it's happy to be here. Sorry I can't send you any rain, but at least yep, we sorry. have <laughs> at least we have AI to comfort us in our time of need, right? Okay, there okay, you go. Okay, so I'm glad you're asking. ChatGPT, you know, when it came on the scene in er, in late 2022, it's very exciting, but you there's big problems with it. Like if you if you kind of approach it and you ask it a question, you get some real crappy answers and results on the other side. And so when I talk about ChatGPT, it is so important to know that whatever problems you had marketing wise or visibility wise going into using ChatGPT, you're going to have the same problems on the other side unless you have it figured out. And one of the best ways I like to describe ChatGPT is I have three rules when using ChatGPT that I think you'll find really useful. The first is human touch. You always have to put in your own voice, what you're talking about, you have to craft high quality prompts going into ChatGPT and putting time into those in order to get any kind of good information out. The second rule I have for following ChatGPT is you have to overlay your expertise and value because ChatGPT is really just a simple, uh, simple, it's a computer program that is guessing or or calculating what the next word in a series of words should be based on all of its knowledge. And so if we go into ChatGPT and we're not an expert and we don't put our own value in there, then what you will get on the other side of ChatGPT is a whole bunch of bot sounding, lame sounding content that no one is going to engage with and no one's going to listen to. And so really when you go into ChatGPT, especially for authentic marketing, you always want to go in knowing who your one client is and telling ChatGPT who that is so that it can bring back well-positioned content that will actually speak to your target client. And then my third rule of ChatGPT is you always have to have a proven strategy. Yes, ChatGPT can write emails. And yes, you can go to ChatGPT and say, here's a transcript of my podcast. Write me an email to advertise this. And it will, but like if you don't have a strategy on how to actually make that email make money for you or get them to take the next step and you don't have a, a bigger plan, a bigger marketing plan, you're just going to get clicks and no customers and it just really won't work that well for you. So those are my three, my three pillars for using ChatGPT, human touch, expertise and value and a proven strategy. Nice. I love it. I love the clarity of the three. That's really great, uh, Lindsay. So I think the proven strategy is one that would be certainly applicable to any marketing uh, efforts, you know, whether it's chat GPT, whether it's 20 years ago, you know, and I think that you're, you're, you're onto something that a lot of, and I even think that sometimes marketers get into the shiny objects, right? Oh, this would be cool. We could get more clicks. We should put we should spend X number of dollars on this. And we start tracking and looking at the uh, the number of likes on a Facebook page or what our SEO ranking is on Google. Uh, but we still don't, miss, we're missing the point sometimes, which is to say, what is the overall strategy? What's the point here? Why are we doing this, right? And, and I was even talking to our own marketing company about this to just say, love you guys. You're wonderful. And I just need to keep us all in mind about why we are doing this so that at least for me, I know why we write these checks because there is a strategy that's going to get us to these results. So I think that's a great point. Let's go back to that first one, the human touch, your own voice and high quality prompts. I think that's really good. Tell me, give me an example of a, the prompt, uh, some really good prompts, like say, I don't know, let's say we want to write a blog on a particular topic. Or we want to summarize some data that we've collected from clients, right? You know, some interview data. What are some prompts that we would probably say are weak? They're not going to be very good. You're not going to get great data out of it. And what are some prompts that are like, knock it out of the park? Yeah. So again, giving ChatGPT good context is, is number one, because it doesn't know that you're a marketer. It doesn't know anything about you and will really just kind of 
try to guess. And so I view ChatGPT very much like I view a VA. You can't communicate to ChatGPT assuming it knows a whole bunch of stuff without you, about you, without giving it context. I'm going to get to your prompt question, though. But there's oh, one okay. more thing before I talk about prompts, Got which it. is this, is that as you're cra- you, want, you want to take this ChatGPT stuff very seriously. It's a business asset. So what you don't want to do is sit down at ChatGPT and open up the thread you were in yesterday and type in another question that it may or may not be on topic because ChatGPT remembers what it gave to you before and going into it very organized, very disciplined and saving variables essentially that you can give ChatGPT to know it's going to give you good outputs is definitely worth your time because it's just another business asset. So in response to your question, when people come to me and they want to start integrating ChatGPT into their marketing, we get some variables in place and you need you want to decide what these are and ChatGPT can help you. So step one is, who are you? What do you do? Okay. And who is your perfect client? And you want to go to ChatGPT and you want to say, and you can just type into it like it's just a VA. Hey, ChatGPT, give me a description of who I am. This is what I do. And you sit there and you type this out to it. Okay. It doesn't have to be pretty, but you type to ChatGPT what you do and you ask ChatGPT to give you a nice summary of it. And you're going to take who that. you are. Yeah. yeah of who, who you are. Who, who, who the you person are, is. What you do, what your expertise is, what your interests are, and how you kind of tackle your clients' problems. Okay. Let me, let me hold, hold on a second here. So, because sure. uh, we could get ahead of ourselves, at least maybe, maybe I could. I once asked Chad GPT to create three titles for speeches that would be appropriate for a chamber of commerce business group. And I pointed it at our website. I said, okay. that, this is all I want you to do is look at this URL and everything in this URL. Okay. Lindsay, God dang it. If that I, I'm sure it thing... gave you nothing, man. I bet it gave no, you absolutely oh, no. gave you good stuff. Oh, cool. I gotta tell you, I was like, holy expletive. It was pretty good stuff. Now, is it rock and roll? Let's just go with that. No, but it was really pretty darn good. So can you point Jet TPT? I guess I want to be confirmed on this. Can you actually point it to certain places or is it always gonna go internet wide? So what my so I haven't played with it quite so much that way, okay? Right. Where I just pointed to a website because ChatGPT is working off a knowledge base from like 2021 or something. And so I wouldn't mm-hmm. want it to go and grab old data or I don't know what data it's grabbing, which is why I prefer the variable route. You always have who you are and you always have who you serve. And who you serve is what their problems okay. are, what their pain points are. And it's right there in a nice little variable that you can copy and paste. So what you're saying is, ChatGPT, here is the prop. This is who I am. Yes. You know, you are writing a, a blog uh, for me, and I can describe that. Uh, the perfect client is X, Y, and Z. Their problems are one, two, three. Develop a, a, a blog with this particular title based on this information. Yes. And I think you want to approach, that's close, but I think okay. you want to approach ChatGPT with a bit more of a step-by-step approach, Dean. Instead of having it write the blog post, you're going to have better luck asking it to go step-by-step. Give me 10, and I like to use this, okay, 10 clickbaity titles that would attract my perfect customer around a blog I could write. Now, I say clickbaity because it starts generating like interest driving interest driving headlines. So you actually want to get the positioning statement and what your blog is about first. Then you can have it do an outline. Well, what if I already have? Because this is a real thing for me. And so this is, this is you know, <laughs> this is free coaching. I'm getting There you go. Hey, That's what yeah. I'm for. All right. So I am delivered by my marketing company. And this may not be something that everybody else who is listening in on this could say, yeah, we're in the same boat. So uh, let me just make this quick then. We, I get a title from them that says, we want you to write a blog based on this title because of their work that they've done, re- market research, who we are, pain points of our client, SEO, blah, 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 fill in the blank, right? Okay. So we already have the title. Okay, great. So okay. I'm creating, then I would go in and I would say, I'm creating a title with this. This is what I do. This is my perfect client. I'm creating a blog based on the title. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Please. Re- so instead of having it, cre- is, I found better results with ChatGPT is iterative. So instead of just create me a, the whole movie that I want, instead it's let's start with the title and then let's start with the layout and see if I actually like that layout. Okay. The like what the major points are. And if I do, then I'm going to have ChatGPT expound on this one section and then expound on the second section. So more iterative instead of telling ChatGPT just to give you the whole answer. Or or you could ask it to remove something, could you not? Like, you know, or, or not expound on, on some aspect of it because it just doesn't fit. Yeah, and I think that's a really important part of my ChatGPT, okay, about ChatGPT is, and when we talk about treating it like your intern or a team member, you should talk to it. So when it comes back and maybe it gives you crappy results, that don't position you as an expert and aren't really leaning into that one pain point you want to talk about at your chamber event, after ChatGPT gives you results, you go back and say, okay, this time do it again, but position me as an expert and really lean into this pain point. Okay, Enter. so as I, I found this out, I don't know whether everybody else knows this, but if you, it remembers the last question, the la- it has that sort of a history of yes. what you last talked about in a particular session, correct? Meaning like but, I could yes. say, based on the previous results you created, do more in this particular area. So you don't have to recreate the wheel each time. It's It's got a history based on the work that it created before. Yeah, and just like you talked to a VA, remember when you said this? Outline that for okay. me. Or when you said this, okay. actually make it this. So you just want to be really clear in your communication to ChatGPT. They're just like your husband. Like they don't get it, okay? You have to line it out step by step for him, Dean. <laughs> they don't get it. Husbands don't get it. Wait a minute, Lizzie. You have to talk slowly and step by step. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Man, we got just digged a little bit. <laughs> I'm sorry. For your Lizzie. wives, what your you partners, say? it's part of it. Down, I wasn't <laughs> listening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, that's fascinating. Uh, that that really helps. So any other? So now we sort of dug into the the, the prompts. Yeah, and I want any... to talk just one more thing about yeah, ChatGPT. Yeah, right. it, it's not going to do everything for you. So if you're like, go write me a blog post title or go write me a blog post, of course the output is going to be crappy and it's going to be bot like and it's not going to sound like you. And so I always like to remind people, it's twenty sixty twenty. 20% of giving ChatGPT context. Hey, this is a marketing thing. I'm wa- I want you to help me with Facebook posts, okay? And like, that's the that's how I'm coming into this because like not all marketing is the same. What you post on Instagram is different than what you post on Facebook. So that detail is very important. And then you give it your one true client, you give it what you do, and then ChatGPT will do 60% of the work. 20% is good prompts and context. ChatGPT will output 60% of the work. And then you take what it gives you and you put your own voice and your own expertise and your own, just your own polish and, and, and you got to review it and because you want to make sure it's saying what you want it to say. So that final 20%, but it can easily create 60% really good marketing for you. Yeah. And I've noticed that too. So you're saying that the 20% really is your editing of the 60. Yes. And checking for facts, checking for facts and making sure it's your take on things. Is there a way to teach chat GPT your voice? I mean, like, I, I, is there a way of getting the 20 down to 10? Well, that is through saving good variables. So, for example, for example, to get it in my voice, there's certain things. So, like this 206020 thing that I just shared with you, okay? That's something that I tell people a lot. 20% in, 60% chat GPT, 20% on the other side. And right. so I call that the 206020 rule. And within my variable spreadsheet, I have the 206020 rule. And so, and like I've had ChatGPT give me a nice description of that. And so then when I go to social media, I'm like, I actually want to address this pain point of authentic marketing in ChatGPT. I want to address it with my 206020 rule. And I put have the description there. Please produce some output. So if you can spend a little time creating like we say things in our business we describe our technologies and our systems in a certain way if you can get these variables set up then you can have chat gpt sounding like you because it's not going to come up with 206020 but it's going to no, make it sound no. a lot better but and how, it was how, my idea 
how far back is its memory? Because if I get, if I go into OpenAI, which is where ChatGPT lives, at least one version, the older version, right? I work with it for an hour. I log off, go to bed, get up the next morning, come back. It's not going to remember what I did the day before, is it? It can. Yeah, it really can. And I really recommend you keep those chat threads real clean. So I have a chat thread for like my podcast. I have a chat thread Holy for social crap. media posts and for my program because it's acting like a different VA for all three of those. What? Yeah. And then I store those I'm chat again, blown, Lindsay. Awesome. I'm glad to provide value, Dean. That's what I'm here for. Okay. But here's the other thing, Dean, that you can do. Is there a way? I'm opening up my. You're saying if I'm lying or not. No, I just am (laughs) kidding. I I trust you. So here's the deal. I got all sorts of things. These are topics that I was using. You know, it could be, it's based on date, May, June, July. I've got all sorts of chats that I worked with. It had to do with any number of things. Could be blogs could be summarizing some client um, uh, interview data, all that kind of stuff. I don't know necessarily about how to create a thread that pulls these things together. Teach us, how do we do that? So you see where it says new chat. So you want to be dedicated to that. So like you would start a new chat, of course, for the podcast and anything like social media wise you're creating for the podcast so that every time, so you can go back and ask it questions about that podcast task. So... When you hit new chat, upper left-hand corner, all right, everybody, follow along. Get on your computers. Oh. Don't be driving while you're doing this. Pull off the side of the road. You're saying, though, that the thread is created by the new chat area on the upper left because when I go to the bottom of the page, you can. that's where the open prompt is, right? That's where you can type in, right? right. And you hit the return button and boom, it's up and running. I don't use the upper left where it says new chat. So, and the, but you have all your chats on the left. So my Correct. chats on the left look like this. Podcast production, podcast advertising, content that converts program, which is my coaching program. Because every time I have a question about content that converts coaching program, I open that thread and I don't, it remembers a lot. It's, well, it's not perfect. Know that. Remembering, if you keep it within context, you, you get better results as you feed it more information. So being disciplined about that is very helpful. Okay. Uh, you know, that's really interesting. I did not know that. That's really cool. Let, let me so, blow your mind one more time. So let's say right. you have a VA and you've spent four weeks telling content. A real VA, like a human being, virtual yes. assistant. Okay. Yeah. And okay. you have like, you have like, you've warmed up ChatGPT to talk about marketing for the podcast. Okay. And right. like you, you're right. dedicated to this thread. There's a way to share that thread with the VA so that the VA's chat GPT now understands the con- a lot of the context that you've been giving it. Wow, that's good. That's really good. And there's just that's a little really share good. link. I mean, chat GPT, for those listening, like it, there's not a lot of buttons here. Like we basically covered every button no. on chat GPT now. So. All right. So is chat GPT 4 that much better than chat GPT 3.5 in cent- and hence I should be spending money on it? Hands down. We've done extensive testing on in our coaching business as well as our clients. Why? Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, you all have to remember it's a piece of software. And so they're going to save the good stuff for paid. And so it is a piece of software. Like even to the example, they're always changing code. Stuff I put in three weeks ago gives me a different result today. They're always tinkering. They're always changing. Be aware. But second of all, the quality and how much context and remembering ChatGPT does on that paid version, hands down, beats anything from a free bucks version. a month. It's worth it, yeah? Worth it. I mean, this is okay. all you have to pay for the best VA you've ever had. Okay. All right. Do you... So <laughs> can you take what you used and worked on in 3.5 and have it be applicable for 4, or do you lose it? You lose it. Those are all individual chats. So just so, recently, the, this okay. real stickler was the upgraded version would only give you 20 queries every three hours. They recently upgraded that to 50 queries every three hours. So I was having to go between 3.5 for less important questions and 4.0 for where I needed okay. the paid stuff. But it does not remember. Okay. Okay. But that's been kind of resolved. This actually just this last weekend, they upped that from 20 to 50, which is a lot, 
which is a lot of queries in three hours. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, this is just absolutely, uh, really cool. I just didn't realize that you could go back and create these threads, uh, brand new world. I wanted to throw out something as well as a, for those of you who are interested in this, I found out through another person on this podcast who was a guest several months ago about something called assembly, S E M B L Y dot A I. And all of you out there who are spending time in meetings that you either run or that you're part of online, like through at this point, it's just Zoom. So I don't think they've quite got it for Teams and other platforms. But what it will do is it will, will record the conversation between you and any other number of people and convert it into text. But then it takes it another step, it summarizes it in a summary of the meeting. And then it takes it into major themes that were talked about throughout that particular conversation. It's pretty darn close. I would even say it's like 80% there. Once in a while, I have to go back in and because my name on my Zoom, um, you know, identifier is Dean Newland CEO slash MFI. So once in a while, it says the CEO said, and yeah. I go back in and just change it out to Dean, right? Or what have you. So the editing on the back end is pretty small. I've been giving it to clients as a way to have them, you know, recall what it was that we just talked about and they're loving it. And right now yeah. I think it's pretty cheap. It's like, I don't know, it's under 20 bucks a month and I'm, I'm, I'm really sold on it. So for anybody who's out there in meetings on, uh, you know, right now Zoom and you want to find a way of capturing the information without having to write it up or go through your notes or whatever, this is pretty slick. Well, then you could go another step, Dean, and take all that information and start your new chat thread in ChatGPT and say, this is a client meeting that I had. Please create me three podcast episodes that kind of address this if my perfect <laughs> client is XYZ. It will help you brainstorm. And like that's how you get non-body information is giving it like that is real juicy stuff that you have there in your meeting, you know? Yeah, or no kidding. create me a client testimonial story, some sort of story I need to tell on social media about how I serve my clients based on this meeting. That's good. That's good. Thank you. Thank Is you. That... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're humble too. <laughs> uh, the... <laughs> so is there a, uh, is there a limit to how much data it can comb through? I mean, if I were to say, here is a thousand word document that I'd like you to work on chat GPT. Is there a word size that it yes. has to you know and what is that yeah and that's a that's pretty difficult like i mean that's kind of annoying to get around like that's one of my least favorite things my guess is chat gpt is going to change that because it can only like gather together and 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 evaluate about seven pages of data so if okay. it's a 30 minute podcast i have to do it in three sections essentially yeah yeah well, what I've done, actually, quite frankly, like with podcasts, is I've taken the notes that were generated by Assembly AI, right? So now it's got everything that you and I said. In fact, I might even write our introduction for this particular podcast using this process. Right. And then said, based on this information, please write a introduction for this podcast in a short paragraph that identifies three things. The situation, the problem or opportunity, and the solution. Because I want it in that format, because I think that helps get people's attention. And uh, we'll see what it creates as a result of our conversation. Oh, it'll create something really awesome. Like, yeah. I always go into it very similar with that. I say, here's a transcript or a summary of my podcast episodes. Give me 10 reasons why a coach looking to scale would want to listen to this. Okay, so it spits out 10 uh -huh. reasons based on that transcript. Then this is where my 20% comes in. Then I sit down and I hack out an email about it. Okay. Oh, yeah, they want to listen for this. And then I give that email to ChatGPT and say, perfect this, check this for grammar, spelling, and clarity. Put in a bulleted item list at the bottom with everything you changed. Go. Everything you changed? Yeah. So if I give it my email and I want it to oh. fix the email, then it will tell me, oh, I updated Where? sentence one to say you instead of your oh, blah, blah, blah. So you can it. actually oh. kind of see why yeah. it did it. Do you use Grammarly? Uh, not a lot. Not a lot. Okay. I use Grammarly just for, 
for checking uh, spelling and grammar, uh, sentence structure, you know, creating active versus passive sentences. And I've, I sometimes take the information that I get from chat GPT, plop it in and grammarly, it cleans up some stuff and it makes it a little bit more, you know, user friendly and, and readable. I'd be curious, Dean, because that's similar to some prompts that I have, which is, uh, you know, for some of my clients, it would be like, speak at a fifth grade level, don't mm. use complex sentences, active versus right. passive voice. And it can yes. spit out something pretty good even before you go to Grammarly. Uh, uh, okay. So um, this has been great. What other sort of tips and tools do you have for anybody that is either a coach who is trying to scale and monetize their business, but even people who work for larger organizations where they're not the entrepreneur, uh, like a yes. lot of coaches are, who is just trying to lean into this new technology and make it more efficient because I'm already seeing productivity in my world going way up because I'm not spending as much time uh, doing some of the grunt work. And yet I can still throw in my own authentic voice into the content that we're creating. So uh, the soul of Dean hasn't been lost. You know? Yes. And that's one of the so big, com- yeah, that's one of the big complaints, the pushbacks, right? Yeah. 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 Well, I was, we were doing, I was doing some facilitations with the uh, last week with a group of um, creative writers. You know, they run programs for writing that they're in the literary community. A lot of them are published authors. We were talking about this whole concept about ChatGPT, and they said, yes, you can certainly ask ChatGPT to create a poem or to do an iambic pentameter verse that mimics Shakespeare. You know, you can do that. But the, the trained eye can sort of feel whether or not this is coming from a human soul or not. And maybe this gets into a little bit of intuition, hence the name of this, you know, podcast. But there's something that reads and smells, you know, authentic and that sometimes you can also sense like, eh, this was created by a machine. I don't know why I feel this way, but I just do. What is your Remind- thoughts on that? There's a name of that. Okay. So did you ever see, did you ever see um, Polar Express Christmas movie with Tom Hanks where he was yeah. computer generated? So yeah. like that movie, because the whole thing was computer generated and it was like, just cool. It was like a little bit off. Right. Yeah. And it's yeah. like a little bit weird to watch. Like they're a little bit too human. And so that's called the uncanny valley is what it's called, like in movies. And that's what uncanny you, valley uncanny valley is okay. when a movie is giving you too much AI. And what this intuition, I know that's a bot. I just don't know why. Like I know Tom Hanks and that character looks good, but it's still giving me the creeps here kind of thing. And so that is that is what it's called. And, you know, I don't disagree with the writers out there. And which is why I recommend you go in with your thoughts and your expertise and your poetry and you ask it to make it better. Or the other thing is you ask me, you ask me, what can people who are entrepreneurs really use ChatGPT for? And so let me answer that, which is instead of like going to Google for something, Start practicing on ChatGPT. ChatGPT is a skill, okay? It's Mm. not just something you're going to pick up. It's something you need to practice with and look at. But for example, my son, we made homemade slime because it's summer. And he came into my office to show me the homemade slime, which is just glue. And he stretches it out like this. And it goes all over the floor. Green glue on my floor, which is not great. Now, previously on my life, I would have went down 10 YouTube holes to figure out how to get this freaking slime out of my carpet. But instead, I go to ChatGPT and I say, how do you get homemade slime made of Elmer's glue out of your carpet? And it gave me three really decent options. The first one actually worked. So it's a great way of like asking it to do stuff for you. Like don't go to Google because it will take all that information and just give you a straight answer. And then once you start implementing and learning the skill of ChatGPT, you can see how that would very much benefit you and your business and your systems and whatever you're trying to do. Aren't we heading in that direction where Google will or Microsoft or any of the other major search engines just simply incorporate within their search ChatGPT? Is that the future? Yes. yes. And, that, and that's a danger because as experts, it's going to whitewash all the information and like it didn't credit any of those people, which is uh. why. Right. 
So like that's a why Hollywood is up in arms right now. That's why all the writers are striking. I don't know by the time this goes live, which is probably sometime in no, October. They will probably still be striking. It seems pretty serious this time. Yeah, well, I can see why that they're upset, you know, but I also am concerned that it might feel like a losing battle because it's a new technology that's taking shape and taking form and taking root so quickly. How are we going to turn back the dial if you're a writer? Yeah, that's what you and, and I mean, and it, and it yeah, those things follow a script. They follow a story. But the the beautiful part is, is putting this expertise and this uniqueness on top of it, allowing it to support you. It's just like handing it off to a VA. And it always was. It's way better than your other VA, though. But you always want to fact check this. You always want to put your secret sauce. Otherwise, you're going to be mm. like, that's what I think your real risk is, which is. How do I know that you're actually a coach that knows what they're talking about or a coach that actually is really good at using ChatGPT? And when we're doing marketing, how are we going to know that? So let me ask you, though, this. I, I, I get that, that this authenticity is so important, uh, whether you're a writer in Hollywood or a blogger or what have you, you're marketing something. But if in the future, ChatGPT becomes embedded into the major search engines like Google or what have you, do we will will we still have websites? Will you have a website? Will I have a website? Will will my website even be as valuable as it is today? Because it's just combing for information and regurgitating out. Or will it still be able to find people? Find? I mean, I guess I'm just wondering how this is going to change the way in which we currently are marketing. Yeah, I mean, it's going to change everything in which we're currently marketing. I don't have those answers for you on Google. I mean, Google also is sharing a lot of short form videos right now. They'll show you a TikTok for your answer right now. And so do I think you will always need a website? Yeah, that's your storefront. That's how people know to go and find you and get the latest, greatest information and you and your value and expertise right there on your website. I don't think that's disappearing. Whether or not your blog post will still drive traffic there. A year from now, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I've always been thinking that coaching, if we go back to that original conversation, is a human interactive service. And we could certainly just go on our phones with ChatGPT 3.5 or 4.0 and ask any number of questions that would provide us some answers. It could be emotional questions. It could be how to handle conflict with a bully. It could be you know, how do I develop my emotional intelligence? Uh, how do I develop a strategic plan for, you know, um, you know, an aerospace company in South America? I mean, you could do all sorts of stuff. But when it comes down to that sort of human connection that helps you move through it and execute on that, uh, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm a dinosaur, but I still think that they, that human contact, that human connection is going to continue to be important just as the same reason why TikTok is important now, regardless of whether it's spying on us or not, or you believe in its its ultimate goals, or let's just keep the political stuff out, right? Okay, that's for another podcast. Okay. But yes, but, but the thing that I find fascinating about TikTok, it is authenticity on steroids. It is the person who's walking their flipping dog with their camera in their face, the birds flying overhead, you know, and their hair doesn't look great, but they're saying something that's authentic and people are loving it. And so I think that we're starved for human authentic connection, no matter what, that that's going to be something that we're going to want. Yeah, I agree. And my take on that with ChatGPT is it's going to allow us to have a lot more time to do that. So just to take it into like a grand marketing scheme back, you know, only a couple of years ago, you could sell coaching programs through some sort of five day launch and get people to press a button and buy a $5,000 program. But now, because everyone is doing it and our prospects are warmed up to it, the best way right now is to actually get the right people on an enrollment call and to have that one-on-one -on -one connection, to really understand where they're coming from, and that's how you want to be actually enrolling people. You can't remove the human touch, and I think it's going to become yeah. more and more important with the ch with the bot apocalypse that is upon us right now. Bot apocalypse. I haven't heard bot that term before. <laughs> There's a new one for you. So here's how I will tie this up into a nice little bow. 
And I and I so appreciate this conversation with you, Lindsay, because it's really opened up my eyes a lot, is that the 60-20 rule, which I think you're right on with that, is, is really important to remember that last 20. We got to put the human factor into this technology. We got to have that intuitive knowing about what our, we can't get sloppy. We can't get lazy. We can't just say, hey, I got 80% of it done. Let's just call it good. Because we are still, and probably more so than ever, in a authenticity economy. People want the real human being to show up that is not bot generated. They want that soul, that glitter in one's eyes to connect with them. And if we can overlay that as the last piece of this particular technology, I think I think we got something. If we don't I agree. I, I agree. I agree. You can't that's the only way you're not going to reach the uncanny valley in all of your marketing is that you put I, I sum it up with four letters, thems vibe, experience, methodology, and skills. If your social posts and your marketing addresses those four things, that's like authenticity to me. That's how your content speaks of you. You're sharing your own experiences, your own client experiences, your own vibe. And really, that is how you can overlay this on ChatGPT to make it sound like you. But get ChatGPT to do a lot of heavy lifting. Say that again. They're four Vs. V- vibe. Yep. Experience, Explore, methodology, and skills. So thems. Oh, I see. And that's what, how I found people will coach with you. If they know and like your thems and you're showcasing those online, you can, get, you can attract the right clients to you. Excellent. Lindsay, nice to talk to you. Yeah, it was a real pleasure, Dean. Thank Come you for Come out over to bed. Let's go out for a walk. Let's do it in the heat. I know it's not bad though. It's looking pretty good out there. You know, I think it's one of those evenings that we'll be able to sit outside, but I think so. It's been kind of smoky lately and and the heat's been a bit uncomfortable, but um, it's really nice to get to know you. Yeah, it's been a real pleasure, Dean. Thank you. You bet. Thank you for listening to the Business of Intuition. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you'd like to learn more about Dean or Mission Facilitators Leadership, go to mfileadership.com. That's mfileadership.com.